This video is about my hobby projects that I completed in December, kind of my overall perspective of the month, and my plans for 2021. So here we are. Uh, this is my hobby journey video series. I haven't done one of these in a while, but I, I think this is a better place to kind of put my hobby projects in and just kind of give um, my thoughts on the month in general and um, any 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 feedback or perspective I have on on painting and um, another month in the hobby. Uh, hopefully this window behind me isn't too bright. Where I'm starting to get my hobby room shaping up to the way I want it. There's still a lot of work and a lot of kind of furniture I want to get for it, but it's starting to get there. Right now it's it's still pretty bare bones after the move, but I'm now in a, a fairly good rhythm. We've been here now a good three months or so, so. And things have been fixed up, a lot of repainting, but it's definitely starting to feel like home. So, December was a busy month. Managed to complete 48 models, which I'm quite happy with. with. Um, but, you know, between buying kind of Chaos Wars in January, I bought some Disciples of Zinch from uh, Warhammer Weekly Tom. And kind of a splurge of chaotic spending, you know, Indominus and other box sets. And uh, for whatever reason, I just accumulated a lot of plastic this year. So I wanted to focus on some hobby projects in the last month to really boost my numbers. Because overall, I really stopped hobbying um, probably like early spring and just haven't really done anything since then. So a large batch of models here in December to, you know, doesn't even come close to balancing out the uh, pile of purchase models, but it at least makes some attempt. So the first project I managed to complete was the um, Zarbag's Gits. This is the Warhammer Underworlds um, Warband. You know, as uh, as uh, one of these unique sculpted war bands that they have a lot of character and each each uh each you almost need to paint like a character right and then they need a lot of attention and so i initially started painting the czar bags gets with a whole bunch of regular gets and i quickly realized that doesn't work well because it's just like you can't you can't process those on like an assembly line, right? Like you, you can because they're 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 too individualistic, right? So you just miss parts, and so I eventually stopped on the other gits and just focused on czar bags. But I think they they turned out really nice. I think they're a very characterful unit. Um, it's nice to have some sort of warband for Warhammer Underworlds, even though I'm not really focused on getting those painted up. I just thought it would be a fun thing to do and um, something different. So in addition to that, I did 39 regular Moon Clan goblins uh, or gits. <laughs> um, it's 39 because I miscounted when I grabbed them out of the storage. Uh, <laughs> there's just plenty there. I think I have 150 Moon Clan goblins or something, but yeah, so, so I only painted 39 as opposed to 40. But um, most of these are, are probably from like the 6th edition starter set, uh, but Battle for Skull Pass. Um, again, I am very happy. I just finished these last night watching Warhammer Weekly. And um, really great models and <laughs> quite a lot of fun to kind of paint through. Uh, I can envision a whole table of these little guys, and uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. It's definitely a lot of work, though. I... I picked this project specifically thinking I could get these done liquidly split and they took a little more time than I envisioned. And you know, I watched, um, you know, someone else posted some pics of their little goblins on Twitter like a week ago. And I wasn't really planning on painting the, the moon on the shields. 
uh, I think I was just going to do metal or something. But boy, am I glad I did that because it really brings it out. So I noticed that this other guy had, had painted those shields and I was like, oh, you know what? That looks way better than what I was thinking. So I'm really glad I did that, but <laughs> it takes a lot of extra work. Like I said, for, for a model that's so small and really doesn't have an enormous amount of detail, there, there are little components on them, especially when you're doing a big unit of 40, that take time. Now, I don't know if I want to do 40 on like an assembly line again. Um, I, th I think it's best to do 5 to 10 models. And I've talked about this before, but I keep forgetting my own lesson here. Um, <laughs> I constantly grab a huge amount thinking, oh yeah, it won't be so bad. But it definitely gets a little monotonous. I, I think, you know, completing 10, maybe 20 tops, 20 tops. But 40 plus the 9 from Zara Bags trying to paint those simultaneously. It was just a little dreamy. But, you know, I was determined to get them done. Managed to get it. So, you know, 2021, I'm going to be focusing on more specific armies. I really toyed with the idea of doing Gloom Spike Gits. But I don't think I will. At least not initially. I, you know, between all my random hobby projects for the last couple of years, I have like tons of collections that are already somewhat seeded, right? That already have one or two units painted. And so the good thing about that, and of course I took fairly meticulous notes about uh, the, the paints and colors that I'd used. Um, and so I should be able to pick those up back up fairly quickly and... Uh, and it's nice to already have one or two units painted at the very least, so the idea of painting a larger force isn't quite as intimidating. So overall, I don't think it was so bad. And um, you know, forty-eight models, quite a quite a quite a bit of models, but um, about a week or so of Christmas of de December, I should say was taking up assembling models because I, I bought a whole oodles of models um, for Christmas, some of which were back ordered. They'll be arriving sometime in January. And I spent a week just assembling those and uh, putting some serious time inhaling more glue, glue fumes than I would care to admit. Um, you know, after assembling so many models, uh, you know, for such a sizable collection, I guess I'm probably a prime candidate for any, you know, potential har harm effects of uh, inhaling all this glue, but, um, man, it can it get bad <laughs> when that's all you do for like a week straight. But that's done, and then the painting itself, uh, you know, I managed to complete the other goblins in the other three weeks, and also doing quite a lot of other hobbying, too. So one of the other things that I've been spending my time on, apart from making videos, is my collection resource. And I came up with a more cohesive plan um, late November, early December about what I was going to do to kind of get that ball going. This is my kind of model database for Games Workshop uh, models. And I did decide to place most of the information in like an Excel spreadsheet. I toyed with the idea of using some other database software, but Excel is just easy and uh, free for the most part, certainly cheaper. And what I've been doing is assigning each model and a session number, which is kind of library jargon. So each, each model gets like an identifiable number associated with them. It's not, it has nothing to do with its importance or place uh, within the collection. It's just, you know, you, you start counting up. So, you know, I've gone through 800 models or so uh, in December, kind of giving them a unique number and also listing in the Excel file any identifiable information I can uh, kind of the current names, um, previous names, 
the year it's released, whether it's made by Games Workshop or Forge World or some other company. Um, some earlier GW models are, I guess, made by Marauder. Um, and making my way through all these. Now, I've also been taking the time to get as much information on the plastic sprues. Um, and that's taken a lot of time because it involves going back to uh, the various websites and downloading more images and kind of organizing those in a way that would make sense. Um, it's a lot of work, but I enjoy doing it, uh, you know, but that has been taking up, you know, probably a couple hours every single day for most of December. Still not through all the Age of Sigmar models, and then I have all the 40k models to get through. Now, most of these are more current models. There are some older models that I am working on and processing through, but for the most part, they're relatively still current. And so I want to get at least through the models that I currently have. Age of Sigmar, uh, the 40k collection, before I actually start creating the, a website and, and putting those in, in a place where they can be uh, publicly visible and, and useful. And one of my reasons for waiting to some extent on that is just to have something that's a little more complete, but also, you know, I want it to be also a platform for just Hooves of Doom in general. And I guess if I can have that ready by, say, spring, and I'm still producing regular content by then, I would consider that to be a, a pretty good, successful run for me. At that point, it makes more sense then to kind of have this website that is promoting the channel and, and my various activities. So that's, that's kind of my goal. And I'll keep working on it. It does take up some time. My, my, my hobby time in general is currently split between, you know, uh, things for the channel, things for that collecting resource that I think will pay uh, some pretty good uh, uh, dividends in the future. And, of course, my own hobby projects. In addition to gaming. I guess gaming is like a, a fourth thing. <laughs> So that's, that's one thing I'm definitely working on. But overall, December I thought was a pretty good month of progress. Uh, first full month of kind of the relaunch channel. And I'm fairly optimistic. I, I really don't want to continue this pattern of doing one or two months content and, and then disappearing for several months at a time. I'd really like to continue it, even if it is just one video a week or so. So I do start a new job in January. One of the benefits of this past month, it was currently still unemployed. My new job, um, it's a 40 hour week and a four day work week. So I really need to just think, uh, you know, just kind of talking through this myself. I've got to be fairly well organized, right? I mean, I'm not going to have, have that much time on the four-day actual work week because it's a 10-hour a shift and it's an hour commute each way. So that's going to eat up most of my free time. So the three-day weekend is going to be where I need to really maximize what I'm doing. And I know that, and I think I can plan it out pretty successfully. So we'll see, <laughs> but I, I do hope I do hope I'm here. Uh, I, I don't have any plans at this point of disappearing in January or February. So we'll see, and I'll just talk briefly about my other 2020 projects that I completed earlier this year. Uh, I was thinking of doing kind of a standalone um, showcase video, but there's just not enough meat on the bones here. To, to make a kind of a, its own video. It would be like a minute or two long. So I'll just add it into this as basically a summary of my 2020 projects. And, you know, earlier this year I did a World Bears Dreadnought. This is kind of a horse heresy model. Um, kind of, I, I don't know if these even match 
you know, they really don't. They, they don't, they're not really that compatible with other world bearers models, right, from Forge World. So I'm not really sure how this relates to a potential larger collection of 30k world word bearers, but in the meantime, it's still kind of a fun little model to have finished. I also did a full unit of Black Legion Chaos Space Marines. And these were an interesting experiment. And I, uh, it is my aspiration to really get a, a 40k army painted up and, and uh, get a little more involved in that gaming scene here in Maine. But uh, it's, I'm trying to think if that was like my first actual 40k models that I painted. Um, no, I did some Tau uh, in 2019. But in either ways, I think it's really my first full Chaos Space Marine unit. Pretty happy with how they turned out. Also did a little Black Legion character that uh, went with it. I have a couple of those uh, Chaos Lords like that actually in my collection. So I think the other ones, I don't know, an Alpha Legion or something at this point. But, you know, overall, uh, kind of a hard palette to kind of work with a Black Legion because it's just black and gold. And I also I often feel like when you're working with Warhammer models, you just use way too many metallics. <laughs> There's a lot of lot of Chaos Space Marines in particular that just seem to be like a lot of brass, a lot of metal. Um, and sometimes that can be tricky. And I also painted up a unit of Idenef Deepkin. Now I thought these turned out really well. I was super happy with these guys. Um, just kind of gorgeous. Uh, really happy with the basing. Um, and just, yeah, I was quite happy with how those turned out. Um, my wife insisted on kind of adding like a little bit of a green accent to it. And I think if I were to ever get like a turtle, I would probably paint it green and just kind of keep that accent going. Or even the eels. Even the eels would be kind of a nice little green. Oh, just go back to those little Moon Clan uh, gits. All that yellow makes me really want to do kind of like a spider fan army. And they're all kind of riding spiders that are painted yellow as well. I think a nice little accent to kind of draw both those forces together. Um, there's actually like a little like beetle on one of the um, Zarbeg's git spaces. I painted those yellow, um, and yeah, I, I, I could see that being pretty cool. So one of the other hobby projects I completed this year was the Undead uh, and the Witch Lord for Hero Quest. Now this was a good project, a good way to kind of get some models done, and also I'm not at all concerned about you know achieving kind of tabletop uh, standard here, right? Um, kind of the traditional kind of battle ready <laughs> version of painting I think is very appropriate for hero quest models you can you can you can definitely take them up to to a higher degree I've certainly seen some amazing paint jobs on hero quest but uh, as someone that has played hero quest off and on for you know 30 years or so at this point um, just having the models painted is a success I, I certainly I'm not looking to have these, like, the best painted hero quest models that I can possibly do. I'm, in some ways, that was quite liberating to just kind of do some basic um, uh, main colors and then a wash and then, you know, just the slightest of highlights and then kind of move on. So that's good. And I could see myself returning, painting the old orcs and the f goblins. And all the other hero quest models a uh, good way to get a lot of, a lot of things done and um yeah a lot of memories of that game obviously my hero quest videos are still like among my most popular uh and you know it's been five years and every single month there's still lots of people watching those um so future projects for 2021 i've talked a little bit about this in some of my hobby hoarder videos I just did. Um, 
Uh, Slanesh. I'm going to be working on Slanesh. I do believe. Um, this might seem really counterintuitive, but I might do some rework on Slanesh of models I already did uh, five years ago. Uh, my wife does not like that paint scheme I did, and I think with a small amount of effort, um, I can change them. They do need to be rebased. Uh, they're, they're kind of on an outdated basing scheme that I have no interest in duplicating for any future purchases. So to bring them in line with what I'm doing with my other collections and, and any future hedonites that I buy, I want to kind of rebase them and kind of give them the, the full Age of Sigmar look that I've been doing. But that, um, I'm hoping to do quite a lot of that here in January um, and kind of get that over and done with. I might get a Keeper of Secrets in January, paint that up, because I think that collection des desperately needs it. When it comes to the actual Hedonites, the, the Mortal side, that release in February, I'm not anticipating I'm going to buy a lot of it. I definitely want to jump on board to some ex extent, but I don't want to... You know, the purpose of what I'm doing is to paint um, lots of models. And as there are so many new kits with the Hedonites, it's probably not the best idea to, you know, just buy tons of everything. So I'll be probably a little more selective. I'll take a look at the rules and just to see how this operates. It really in some ways depends on if the demons are any good. If I can actually put together a combined force of demons and mortals that is you know, coherent and makes sense, I'll probably consider doing that. Um, right now, you know, the only major confirmed purchases I would say for me are the Slangor. I probably want six, maybe more of those, and probably like ten pain uh, bringers, and that might be it. And maybe I get the rest at some future date. You know, when, when Slanesh is returned to at some point, if um, a, f a few years down the road, maybe then I can look at more of the regular mortal faction. But for now, I'm very interested in the army. I just don't want to get too bogged down immediately into the new year with tons of new models. And I'd much rather focus as much as I can on the backlog, even though I, I will be reworking some of these uh, demons here. <laughs> the other armies that are definitely a go is Night Hunt. Um, I'm really hoping to be working through my Night Hunt army probably in March, late February, March kind of deal. And I have a really good sense of what, how I want to paint that army and how I want to tackle it. Um, uh, my apologies to Vince, I probably won't do like a 24 hour army <laughs> project on that. That was very tempting. Uh, I just don't think it fits the style of what I'm hoping to do. Now, that doesn't mean my style is better, or it's, it's probably end up being a worse product, but <laughs> and involve much uh, a lot more time. But I think you know what I'm looking for in particular is just something that my kind of my wife my wife might be able to help me out with a little bit too. You know, she's expressed interest in helping me paint that army. And um, it might be fun to kind of do that as a little bit of a joint project. And then, of course, some sort of 40k army. But there's a lot here in the works. I'm hopeful that 2021 is my best year in the hobby. There's a lot going for it, providing I can drill down and keep the commitment and keep going strong. So best wishes uh, to everyone for the new year. Um, and I hope everyone can work towards uh, you know their their goals and aspirations for the year. Certainly when I look back at my goals for 2020, they didn't quite work out, but <laughs> this year in particular was a little strange. It was definitely an off year in so many ways. So let's hope at least by the end of 2021, things get back to some state of 
normality and uh, we can go about living our lives. So I'll see you in the next month. Thanks for watching and have a good one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Please consider supporting the channel by commenting on the video, hitting that little like button, and subscribing for more Warhammer content.